This is Bumper to Bumper Radio, the car show. Drive in anxious and cruise out confident. With the best automotive information for your vehicle, Bumper to Bumper, helping you and your car feel better. And now your hosts, Matt Allen and Dave Riccio. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Bumper to Bumper Radio on a wet, rainy Saturday morning. I am Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen. This is Bumper to Bumper Radio, where we are helping you, the motoring public, have a better overall car repair experience. If you've got car questions, we've got car answers, so we encourage you to give us a call at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTR, or you can email, text, what app? We don't want any faxing, (laughs) faxing, right, Dave? (laughs) You can text questions to 411-923. Again, 411-923. And if you got questions, give us a call. We'll take care of them. Wet <laughs> I don't know what's going on here this morning, Dave. You got your arm in the air like you're trying to uh, air out your armpit or hold out that microphone. A, or what having a rough is? morning, man. A rough morning. Not enough coffee, I don't think. Well, when the sun is not shining, my you know, I'm bald, so my solar panels here on top of my head, I, I need that that sun to soak in, but it's so a little a little bit off today. I'm a little disappointed, you know. We've got a NASCAR race going on this weekend. Hopefully, the rain doesn't keep up, and uh, you know, keep keep some clear skies. But I guess we need one last blast of cold and wet before the before we can be spoiled with sun forever. Well, I got the guys working at the shop today. We're just so busy that they're working Saturday. The doors are locked and the phone's not ringing, but they're getting some work done. And I was walking across the parking lot, and a transmission shop gets a little bit of oil in the parking lot. And it just barely rained in Tempe. And I literally fell on my butt. <laughs> well, and, and that's the same thing with the car. When you get a little bit of rain, that's worse than than having a lot of rain. And what we need, I mean, it's been, I think it, we made 67 days was the last I heard. So maybe we made it finally to 70 days without rain. And depending on where you are in the valley, if you got just a little bit of rain, that's the most dangerous kind of rain on the road because that's just going to lift up a little bit of that oil and, and the gas and the petroleum and, and all the stuff that is absorbed into the street. It's just going to bring it to the surface, and that is falling your butt slippery. Right, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> exactly where, what I did. Where we really need the rain to come down and lift that stuff up, get that oil out of the asphalt, and then rinse it off to the side. And now that street is nice and, and has better traction and, and is much safer to drive on. So that that's just, I guess, one of our little tips of the day that everybody, I think, knows it but just forgets it. The immediate thing that comes to mind is wiper blades and tires. I got my wife's oil change at the car wash last week, and uh, and they called me because I was too busy to change her oil. Couldn't do it at my shop, so Sinner. they called me. And they, Sinner, Sinner. <laughs> shoe salesman's kid goes without shoes, or shoemaker's kid. Yeah. And uh, they called me. They said, "Oh yeah, you're you, you need a fuel service and you need a transmission service." And they're not, going down the line, and I said, "Not hey. from the car wash, I don't." <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> they, I said, "Does the car need wiper blades?" And then they go look, and they go, oh, yeah, they're horrible. And I knew they were terrible. I just wanted to see if they would catch the wiper blades. Literally, it was like metal. So if my wife would have turned the wiper blades on today, it would have gone, you know, right Uh, across the windshield. But, you know, if you can't see, you can't drive. Right. Got to have wiper blades. Yeah, you've got to have wiper blades. Now's a good time to go check those. And when you're replacing the wiper blades, that's something easy. Sometimes it's hard to do. I mean, I've been out there in the parking lot fighting them. But for the most part, get a good wiper blade assembly try not to go buy the two three dollar inserts you know and there's a difference you can go to the auto parts store and you can find one brand of wiper blade that's 299 and the other one is 14 dollars. they're not the same there is a difference they're starting to have silicone blades and and uh you know just trying to make them last longer so go turn one right on right now it's probably stuck to the windshield and then the next thing dave tires that's easy to check i mean we should be checking that all the time anyway always good tires but you don't know until it's time. Yeah. You know, you hit the brakes and the car just doesn't stop. It just keeps going. <laughs> yeah, no no good, especially on a slippery street. And I think some of the, the other things to, to think about, you see people driving and riding in the right lane. And, and we used to hear problems, oh, when it rains, my car won't start. And that used to be a, a, a more common thing, but not on a modern car. However, driving in that right lane and you're blasting water, whether you're having fun splashing, <laughs> splashing people, which you shouldn't be doing, or just driving, 
that water has got an immense amount of force behind it after you've hit it with the tire, and that's splashing up into the wheel well. That could go into wiring harnesses and into weather pack connectors and just... Could, I mean, you never know. Maybe there's a big deep pothole in that puddle too, and you start tearing up suspension. So be cautious with the water. I don't ever see cars on the side of the road. When I was a young kid, it was a normal thing for car, cars to stall up. I just think they're sealed up better than they used to be. But water is one of those things that gets in a lot of little places, and it's not going to cause an issue today. But two, three years down the road, there's a little corrosion that starts in there. You know, yeah. a little bit of electricity, a little bit of electrolysis, and bad connections. And, and rust. And, 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 and there's some other things that you can do. If you park your car underneath where there's a tree or a bush or maybe some kind of fine materials or pine needles are falling in, we see it all the time at my shop, Dave. We open the hood to do a service on a car, and underneath the – around the windshield wipers at the base of the hood, the cowling area, it is just packed with leaves. So when it rains, that water, that's like a sponge. It's just holding that moisture in there. That can promote rust. What, we're, for the most part, it's not really a problem in Arizona, but throughout the, the country in certain areas it may be. But you want to get that out of there. Same with the sunroof drains. We see cars that come in. The sunroof drains, you probably have, if you have a sunroof in the car, there may be four drains. There's probably two at minimum in the front corners. And those get filled up with dirt and debris, and they get plugged up. That thing fills with water from the rain or even go to the car wash, and now you've got a water intrusion or a leak inside the car. One thing we always remind is ABS brakes. ABS brakes. Today's a good day to go try them out in a parking lot just to see if they work. Uh, ABS brakes, you just want to – ABS stands for Analog Brake System, but the guy from Bonnerette says it's the ability to brake and steer. You can't steer if your tires are locked up, but if the ABS is working, you can still do some steering. But with ABS, you just want to plant your foot firmly on the pedal. You don't need to pulsate it. It ain't going to just mess things up, and you're going to hit them twice as hard. <laughs> yeah, no, no pumping the brakes w- with ABS, that's, that's for sure. We had a couple cars in the shop this week where I think as a consumer, I think it would be help, uh, helpful for us to educate you guys on communicating with the shop. And giving the shop all the information, all the things you think might be going on with a car or any repairs you just had a couple days earlier, Everything you can bring to them is going to help keep your cost of the repair down. It's going to shorten up your time at the shop. It's going to simplify it. Matt was talking about a vehicle that he had in his shop, and it was having some sort of weird electrical issue anytime they went to the car wash. Well, yeah, you talk about water. I mean, this was a case where she she had a problem. Every time she went to the car wash, her, her turn signals would start acting funny. And, I mean, they weren't telling jokes. They were <laughs> coming on when they weren't supposed to. You set the alarm. They didn't work. Middle of the night, the, the, the hazard lights or turn signals are coming on. And, no, I haven't had any work done. Nothing nothing done on the car. Never been in an accident. We, we, we do a lot of quizzing. And sometimes people feel like we're really giving them the third degree. And uh, so Which we, go, we are. We, well, because we need to know. We're not <laughs> prying, but we need, to, we need to know this information. And after some time... We, we're figuring it out, and we're like, has this car ever – have you had the windshield replaced? Recent, when did this start? Oh, yeah, it did. So in this case, we had a windshield that did not get put in right, and that water's running down and getting to, into some electrical components. Nowhere near the hazards or the lights or the turn signal switch. It's completely opposite, passenger side of the car. But everything is related. As inconsequential as you think it may be, it may not be. We need to know it. It's going to help us. We always ask this question, have you had any repairs in the last 30 days? And they just go, yeah, oil change. I mean, that's the way it's said. But no, like, like seriously, think about that question. New brakes, new tires, new windshield wiper blades, a new air filter, anything counts here. Did you get a new car stereo? We had an email this week about a car stereo that caused some other problems in the vehicle. Was there anything that happened? That's all good information, and don't think it's too mi- minute not to, not to mention. Yeah, all kinds. I mean, we see Volkswagens. We used to see a ton of them. With problems when people would put the aftermarket stereo and then the check engine lights on, the con- the connector. I mean, I've heard of a technician ruining a scan tool. We take our $700 or $1,000 scan tool to go plug into your car, and somebody wired something wrong, and they had a, a high voltage coming out of a pin in there that shouldn't have been, and he just ruined your scan scanner. Tool. Your scanner only costs a thousand bucks. You guys like Fisher Price scan tool over there? Or what? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, uh, no, I've, we've got quite the collection of them in my shop, Dave. But as you know, we do. We literally have a, a, a Volkswagen Eurovan at our shop, and the guy, you know, the car's not shifting past second gear, and we check it out, and there's a huge dent in the bottom of the transmission pan, and it's got a hole in it. It's low on fluid, so we fix all that, and it still doesn't shift past second. Well, the little temperature lights flashing on and off. 
And so we call the guy and we say, hey, we need to diagnose this because we think it's affecting the transmission. He said, oh, yeah, no, I just had that worked on the last shot. Oh, wow. <laughs> that would have saved me like an hour. Of- well, yeah, and a day and a half ago when we asked you about this, and, and having work done also means my husband, my friend, my whatever tried something or did something. Just because it didn't go to a repair shop mean doesn't mean work wasn't done. I mean, we've we've checked uh, diagnosed the check engine light. Have you had any work done? No. Well, we found this thing disconnected. Oh, my my so and so put an air filter in this weekend. Well, and that's there's that's right. still. Part of the story. Can save you money. So when we come back, we'll be talking about Good Guys Car Show coming up next week. And we've got open phones at 602-277-5827. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen. Today we are enjoying the wet weather. Other than me laying on my butt in the parking lot of my <laughs> business. <laughs> a little slickery out there, Dave. Oh, man, it was just kind of one of those moments. You know, I kind of looked around, made sure none of my employees saw, you know. <laughs> Is that on the surveillance tapes? I'm going to call somebody down there. I want to. We'll, we'll get that posted on the bumper to bumper uh, website. Website. Dave falling on his on his tail side in the parking lot because the because of the slick parking lot. <laughs> For sure. This is my favorite time of year because we've got the Good Guys Car Show coming up this next weekend, March seventh through 9th at Westworld in Scottsdale, and I believe we got Betsy Bennett on the line who joins us every year to tell us about the car show. Hey, Betsy, are you with us? I am. I am here. Well, I, I guess you're you're probably very happy that it's raining this weekend in Phoenix, and we're we're hoping. Uh, for bright, sunny, clear skies next weekend for the for the event, right? Yeah, we are too. I saw the weather down there, and I thought, well, I know I hate it that you're getting the rain, but I, it's easier on us if it happens this weekend versus next weekend for sure. Yeah, let the NASCAR guys yeah. and the rodeo guys have the rain this weekend. I so. know it's yeah, it's too bad. You guys have other than you know a few bouts of rain, you have pretty awesome weather, which is why this event is so popular with so many people. Well, for those who don't know, what the heck is the West or the uh, Good Guys Car Show that's going to be happening this next weekend? Well, the event next weekend is um, the fifth edition of what we call our Spring Nationals, and it's actually the kickoff to our 2014 event season. So uh, we'll be opening up the season next weekend at Westworld, and we'll have around 2,500 hot rods, customs, classics, trucks, muscle cars on display um, during that event weekend. So it's a great weekend of a lot of cars, a lot of – it's kind of a history lesson on wheels for people. You can see all these great old cars. And then we actually have um, All-American Sunday, which is on Sunday the 9th, for the later model cars. So we, we have a broader spectrum this year at most of our events, again, like we had last year. And that's turned out to be a really a really fun feature that we added to these events. Every once in a while, at all, all the shows that I've been to out there, there's always some kind of special event happening and some really cool thing that you're doing. Are there any other special features this year? What's, what's, what's the, the one thing to look out for this year? You know, I think the one thing that's still really wildly popular at all of our events is the autocross, and I think you guys have been out there to see that. Have you taken part in that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they wouldn't let me on the track with my yeah. Honda Element. <laughs> oh, they should, right? Um, but the autocross is, is a great feature. Um, it's great for the participants because if you register your car in the show, then you're eligible to run the autocross. It's all included. So it's a great added fun Thing for them and for people who don't know what the autocross is it's actually a closed performance timed race course so you're racing the clock and for the spectators um it's a great visual it's you know it's loud and you know there's a lot of you know tight turns in the cross sections and so it's it's a lot of fun to watch too well and i think one thing that people might think of a car show they think it's just a bunch of bunch of gearheads or guys out there at the car show but this is really just a a, a family event i mean there's stuff for kids to do face painting there's booths there's there's uh uh not a yard sale but a, a swap meet types thing and so what right. are, what are some of the other details and where can people find out the details of the event i imagine there's a website and a place to buy tickets and such right yeah there is and actually you know we try and make sure that throughout the course of the weekend we have kind of a festival atmosphere so you're right we have the kids area where there's face painting and games for the kids we have a model car show we have a make and take which is a section where Ravel donates model car kits, and the kids get to actually get a model car kit free of charge and create the kit. 
into a vehicle and take it home as a souvenir. So we try and, you know, involve the kids in, in this too and, and give everybody something fun to be, um, to experience. And if people want to get the actual event schedule or if they need further information, our website is www.good-guys.com. So you have to have that dash between the word good and the word guys. And then when you get to the site, you want to go to 2014 events, and it'll pull up the listing, and you'll find the page for the Spring Nationals. And there's a lot of great information on there. If there's hotels, if people still need a hotel room, if they're coming in from out of town. So there's a lot, um, a lot of great information on that site. Great. Well, we're looking forward to being out there next weekend, too. I know uh, Dave and I will be making some stops and, and, and checking, out the, checking out the event, so maybe we'll see you out there. Okay. Bring the sunshine. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, thanks for being with us. We also put a link to it on the homepage at BumperToBumperRadio.com. You can click on it there if you didn't get all that information. So we are going to go with Bill in Chandler on a 2001 Toyota Tundra. Go ahead, Bill. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Um, I called to thank you. I called last week, and I didn't get on the air, but I believe I spoke to Dave. And I mentioned that I'd gone stem to stern on my old my old one Tundra. With everything, you know, and per your recommendation, like a, a year ago, I started listening to you guys. I had the idler gears and everything done on the, uh, when I replaced the timing bells and all of that. And I was so grateful to have that knowledge. You sent me to ADS, and it was, you gave me two guys. I went down to the ADS guys on Chandler Boulevard. I'll tell you what, they are aces, those guys. <laughs> no, I, I'm not kidding. I, I can't thank you enough. I mean, the entire experience after they did the inspection, which is what I wanted, and what's wrong with my vehicle, the guy took me out into the garage, thing was on the lift, showed me everything. It turns out it was it was rather costly, but um, I don't care. You, you know, I just want it right. So I had to replace the rack and pinion. That was leaking, you know. Uh, he could tell from the boot, and he showed me everything. And But I got it all squared away, and I feel like, thanks to you guys, you know, I could take that thing to Boston and back and be as good as any car on the road. And I just wanted to thank you guys. Well, Bill, thanks. And thanks for calling. We definitely appreciate these follow-ups. And it's nice to know that when we're here helping people and doing what we can do, I mean, that that's really what we're here for, Dave and I, to talk to you every week and help you be confident about your repairs on your car and understand what's happening or understand the right questions to ask. But not only that, to have you in a comfort level when you go to a shop like like ADS. I mean, if Greg is listening, kudos to you, Greg, and all the staff there. But that's one of the shops. If you're in the South Tempe area, Chandler, eight, you're right off of I-10 and, and uh, Chandler, Boulevard. Chandler Boulevard. And it's a great shop. And, and, and I call Greg once in a while. He calls me. We share tools. We talk to a technician. I mean, this is a network of, of shops that are really out to do good things. And, and, uh, if we can help each other, too, that that's great. It it's really reaffirms why we're here. Well, I remember talking to Bill last week just after the show. Some of the show calls we can't get to during the show, so we take calls after the show. And uh, Bill said, hey, I just want to know everything that's wrong with the car because I do want to drive it to Boston next week. You know, that's the kind of confidence you want to have when you get in your car. You can be a little lighter on maintenance and things that you repair. It's what is the use of the car? You know, is it... A to B, round town type of thing, or is it something we're going to go interstate travel? Well, and like Bill said, I want to know everything about my car. So as a consumer, you shouldn't be afraid to get that list. It's just, you know, I make the joke. I don't want to step on the scale every morning and look, but you've got to do it to keep yourself in check. I was going to say <laughs> something about you this morning. Did you get on the scale? Hey. <laughs> I did have a donut, but uh, but but we want but you need to know everything, and when you know everything about the car, you can make better decisions on fixing it. We've got Bill and Ruth coming up, 602-277-5827. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio. My pappy said, son, you're going to drive me to drinking if you don't stop driving that hot rod Lincoln. Bumper to Bumper on News Talk 92.3 KTAR. Welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I'm Matt Allen. This guy over here helping me out is Dave Riccio. And I don't know, Dave, it's just not flowing today. This gloomy, cloudy, 
dark sky. I, I particularly myself, I enjoy the, the sunshine. I, so. I could never live in Seattle. There'd be uh, no way. I would be eternally depressed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's nice every now and then, but uh, I guess if it, we didn't get some bad weather, then everybody would be here. I notice when people move here, they never leave. You well, know, and I don't want to leave. I've always lived here. No. Why this, go anywhere else? This is it. Or Mexico on the beach somewhere. That's that's about it for me. So, again, Dave and I are here, Bumper to Bumper Radio, every Saturday, helping you with your car. Anything you want to talk about, you got a car question or car problem and need some help or advice, give us a call, 602-277-5827. It's 602-277-KTAR. And we've Dave. got Beth, Ruthie, Brian, and we are going to go with Steve and Casa Grande on a 2000 Lincoln LS. Hey, Steve, welcome to Bumper to Bumper Radio. Thank you for having me, gentlemen. Um, I just did the brakes on the Lincoln, and uh, that solved a bunch of problems. But uh, when I was backing out um, to test the brake, I heard this loud thud. Whenever I press uh, press and depress the brakes, um, it sounds like it's coming from the front end. I'm not sure if it's maybe a transmission problem, or maybe the front brakes are starting to go. But it's it's a distinctive thud uh, when you press the brakes and then when you depress the brakes. Okay, w- was that noise there before you did the brakes? Uh, not that I can remember. Not that you remember because um, you made. When it- you made one comment. You said, yeah, I fixed the brakes, and that took care of a lot of problems. Yeah, so well, what else was happening with the brakes? Now, what does I did the brakes mean? Okay. No, I'm sorry. Uh, I replaced the brake pads and the rotors on the rear, uh, on the rear brakes. Okay. And uh, they were extremely worn. Um, okay. And it was my girlfriend's car, and when I took a look at it, there was uh, the whole thing, the whole back end was rumbling because of the – uh, it was metal on metal, and the, and the rotors were worn sure. down. Sure, okay. Um, but but I don't remember the thud. But uh, that could be just because of the rumbling uh, in in the in the rear end. Sure. Well, what I, what I, I guess what I'm thinking is you might have. Uh, if it wasn't there before, you're going to just need to go back and double check all the work that you did. Make sure that the bolts that are holding the caliper up to the spindle are, are held down tight and then there's more bolts that are going to actually hold the hydraulic portion to the bracket uh, for the brake caliper bracket you're going to want to make sure those are tight uh, make sure that the brake pad hardware is on because when you step on the brake just a little bit your those brake pads are going to touch and grip and if there's nothing holding them in place they're going to shift even just that eighth of an inch of movement could get you a very loud metallic noise make sure that that is all done properly and then if, if everything is still intact, you could be looking at maybe a control arm bushing or something like that. But, you know, I just redid a whole brake job on a guy's car this week that had, you know, the, had a friend work on it for a couple hundred bucks in a 12-pack. And and uh, it, it cost them dearly because they didn't tighten some bolts right and some stuff fell apart. So you, you really need to be cautious when, when you're doing that stuff, whether it's on I your own car. I do great work for a 12-pack and a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I think he said, you know, he couldn't hear anything else beforehand because the back brakes were making so much noise. Now that that's gone, now we're hyper, you know, we're thinking about everything that may be going on. So that, that noise may have been there all along. It's sometimes when we fix cars, you know, there's this huge, massive head wound going on. We take care of that. And then, oh, yeah, now there's a scrape on the elbow. Now we're noticing that because we're paying attention to it. Right. Where it may have been there all along. So. That's one thing to consider, too. And sometimes it takes two people. You might have somebody ride around in the back of the car, or, or we go out in the parking lot at the shop and, and maybe drive five feet, and, and someone's literally jogging next to the car, hanging out the window, trying to, to find these noises and, and at least pinpoint an area. There can be such odd things. It's like talking about rain. The roof, where the water is dripping, never where the roof is where the roof leak is. Same thing on the car. Where you hear the noise, oftentimes, is not where that noise really originates. They can be difficult to chase down. I would say brake jobs are still one of those kind of DIY jobs that happens. You, people are still doing brake jobs. You know, they are getting, you know, some of these late model, like, European cars can get a little bit dangerous with some high brake pressures, that type of thing. Oh, yeah. So uh, just make sure if you are doing work like that in your driveway, A, support the vehicle, jack stands, don't trust, you know, floor jack to hold the thing up while you're working on the brakes. Ooh. Bad idea. And then also get a manual. That way you make sure there's nothing safety-related that you're not aware of. 
We are going to go with Ruthie and Gilbert on a 2008 Honda Santa F- Hyundai Santa Fe. Go ahead, Ruthie. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hi, guys. Well, I'll tell you what I have. I have on my car. All of a sudden, I was hearing a kind of a walk, 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 walk kind of noise. It sounded like uh, as I would accelerate, as I got to 65, you know, it would get louder inside the car. And I took it back to Discount Tire because I'd bought my tires there, and they rotated my tires for me. The tires are like maybe six months old, so they're all new. He said everything looked good, and he said, let's rotate. And he said it could be an alignment problem, you know. So he did that, and it really didn't make any difference. It was just a really ra- loud kind of wah, 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 wah kind of noise. Did your did your wah, wah, wah seem to move when they moved the tires? Do the steering wheels feel – does the steering wheel no, feel any it, different? or the anything? steering wheel – not everything. No vibration in the steering wheel. No pull from one way or the other. The, the car drove excellent. It just had that loud noise. And getting like 65 – 60, 65, it was much worse. Can you feel that noise? Do you feel it like in the floorboard or in the no, gas pedal? No, I can't. Like now, two forty, I took it into the dealer, and I said, I to- told them what was going on. And they they called me and told me that, um, well, and on their little thing here, it says that the tires are cupping. Now, these tires aren't hardly six months old, and I, I drive like six miles to work. Uh, they look they look great. I mean, just because they look fine, and it's the same kind of tires I've always had on my car. And the sound happened, started, like, within a day or two. I mean, I, I was when I noticed it. They did an alignment on my car, and they told me, because my car was a 2008, that there was some kind of little package kit or something, that the alignment wouldn't take care of it, that I, they had to order this, some kind of little package kit, that sometimes you have to order on cars that are older or have a lot more mileage. I have about 70,000 miles on my car. Okay. Right. Does I, that sound? I, I think I kind of, I know what's going on. And, Ruthie, you may want to follow us up if we don't get – fully answer your question for you go to bumper to bumper radio.com and send me an email this is matt and we'll help walk you through this but originally dave i'm thinking tires Mm -hmm. because the tires will get that choppy uh choppy wear pattern in them and that's going down the road almost if you drive next to say maybe a lifted truck on the highway a lot of tire noise but then Dave and I were kind of passing some notes, and we said tires to ourselves. But then you rotate them, so then tires go away. And then Dave, then what were we thinking? Bearing. Bearing. But now I'm back to tires again because yeah. of the way she described it and what the dealer said. So, in Ruthie, I think what was happening is – is discount may have moved the tires and rotated them, and it, and it may or may not have changed the noise. And what you could be hearing is that tire just kind of slapping the road, going going around. And then what they were talking about at the dealership, they did your alignment, but there's some adjustments. There's, camber there, kits. There's camber, caster, and tow. Those are all three angles when we're talking about automotive alignment. In on many cars. The caster or the camber cannot be adjusted from the factory. It's just a factory setting. But then in the aftermarket, when we go do an alignment and we measure everything on the car, measuring's the majority of the work. We've got to get all the measurements done first. And then if there's no adjustment, there's a kit. And we put that kit in the rear suspension on the right side or the left side. Maybe it's on the front. And that kit allows us to do what the manufacturer didn't provision for when the car was brand new. So you could have still have a tire problem, even though the tires are only six months old. If they've got that wear pattern developed into them, it's there. It's just the way it is. But the thing that concerns me about rotating the tires, if you did that to the rear tires and now they're in the front and the front didn't have that pattern in them, we're going to very quickly wear that pattern into the rear tires. I know this answer is getting long, <laughs> Dave, but... But well, but, once you once you feather a tire pretty good, you're never going to get rid of it. That tire's right. just going to be noisy. I mean, you can you can rotate them and cross rotate them so they go the other direction to try and pick up some of that cupping, fix it up. But for everyone listening, you really should be getting an alignment check when you're getting tires. <clears throat> yeah, because really? you you can burn up tires pretty quick, in a hurry, and uh, you know you just spend a lot of good money on those tires. And then it shouldn't be, you know, some of these, I don't know if some people are really aligning these cars. I know there's some quickie coupon type alignment type well, things. Dave, well, 
<laughs> well, we've got some time. So the other thing, and today's not a good day, and we'll come back to the alignments in a second, Dave, but I want to talk about the tires for a second. And I can walk up to a car and, pe- and tell people, you have an alignment problem or you have a tire problem. And how do you know? That's magic. And it's really not. On a rear, on any car, look at the tire. And today's a bad day because the streets are wet. But if 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 we haven't had any rain in a while and the streets are dusty, you can actually look at a tire and you can see – on a pattern, take a front-wheel drive car and look at the rear tires, and you'll see that on the inner tread, one will be dirty with dust, and one will be perfectly clean. And then the next tread, as you go around the tire, and that's because that tire is out of that wheel is out of alignment, and that tire is, is wearing unevenly. So that's something that easy that you can look at to be an indicator of a worn tire or a bad strut uh, or a bad strut or something causing that problem. And Ruthie, that's not an old car by any means. 2008 is not an old car. So so don't think that there's some special – don't let somebody make you believe that your car is an old car and it's just the way it is. We can make that car perfect. Well, thanks for the call, Ruthie. We're going to go with Beth in Phoenix on a 2004 Ford Escape. Go ahead, Beth. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Yes, I'm having trouble with my transmission. It started a few months ago with um, – it's slipping. So we did a diagnostic test, and it showed a bad sensor. So we replaced the sensor, and it – solved it for about two weeks. Then I lost first gear, and I started driving it like a stick shift, starting out in second, going to drive, and uh, now I've lost first and second. And we're thinking we got a bad sensor because the transmission fluid is completely clean. And before I replace the transmission, I want to know your opinion. Yeah, I wouldn't. I mean, there's still some more diagnostic work to be done. Sometimes when a transmission is starting to have an issue, it can cause a sensor to go bad because those sensors, it's all based on magnetic pickup, and you can get some fuzz on the end of that sensor where the sensor quits reading, and then we replace the sensor, and hey, everything goes back to work, and, and then you know, it just happens again in another couple of weeks. So that's or, one thing I'm thinking of. Or it could have been that the sensor never really fixed it. Once you had the battery disconnected, the computer unhooked, and the code cleared out, you put in the sensor, and it just took two weeks for you to meet the criteria again to make that light come back on for the same circumstances. So the sensor very well could have done absolutely nothing, right? It's yeah, it's true. I mean, we could I mean, we can have a failing. We need to decide whether we have a transmission issue or we have a transmission control issue. And the way we're going to diagnose that is we're going to look at the scanner and we're going to see we're not just looking for codes, you know, when we plug into a car, so right. much as we're looking at the data. And so there's a, you know, it's like the matrix. You're looking at data. What is the, you know, what is the what gear are we in? Which cylinder is on? Which cylinder is off? And the transmission is only going to do what it's told to do. So if the computer is not commanding it to shift into first or commanding it to shift into second, well, we may very well have a problem. And it sounds like you're able to make it work manually as opposed to letting the car take over. Ruthie, where in Phoenix are you? I'm in North Phoenix. North Phoenix, okay. Well, I mean, Dave, your shop, Tri-City Transmission, is in Tempe, and it's worth the drive. So if you have an excuse to go to Tempe and you need a transmission problem, that's one of those experiences. That's like buying the refrigerator or buying the TV, or maybe you're not buying the transmission. More importantly, you're just getting a repair. It's it's worth the try. But then in North Phoenix, too, there's Kurtz Auto Repair, who works a lot with Tri-City Transmission. And if you end up needing a transmission problem, that's may how it may wind up back with Dave anyway. So go to bumper to bumper radio dot com and take a look and and you'll find Tri City Transmission there as long as other shops that can help you with that and uh, hopefully get that taken care of. When we come back we've got Brian, Mark and Eric. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio. Bumper to bumper on News Talk ninety two three KTAR Welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio on a rainy Saturday morning. I guess you're not going to go hiking today. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going hiking anyway. <laughs> I know. I knew you wouldn't. Anyway, I'm not going to the race, though. I'm know. not going to the race either. I, I got tickets to the spring training game for the Cubs. I gave them away. I was like, yeah, you can have them. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yeah, the race may not be so much fun today either, but who knows? We'll see. So, anyway, up first this segment, we are going to go with Brian on Phoenix. He's got a 2006 Ford Escape. Go ahead, Brian. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Morning, guys. How you doing? Fantastic. Good. Uh, 06 Ford Escape, 110,000. When we come up to a stop, stop light, stop sign, the whole friggin' front end shakes. I mean, you can't even hold your coffee at 
<laughs> Somebody's telling me it's the front motor mount because the front motor mount gets all the torque from a front wheel drive vehicle. Not typically when when you're coming now. Does this is this happening during the process of stopping or once you've already come to a stop? Complete stop. So, so you're at a stop and the thing is shaking the teeth out of your mouth. Yes. Okay. I would be going along with the with the motor mount, Dave. Well, I was thinking, I mean, initially, because, you know, you get some wicked brake pulsations when you got some brake rotors that are warped. So that's what I was thinking right off the bat until he said, well, Brand new brakes, rotors been turned, brand new plugs, brand new fuel filter. Okay. Recently gone through, and I'm thinking that's the front motor mount is shot. Well, and if and if it, if the front motor mount is shot, chances are maybe some of the other ones are shot too. Because having just one bad mount on that car, I don't believe is going to give us the sensation the way you describe it. It's just you can't even hang on to your coffee because it's it's shaking the car. So at 110,000 miles, my, I put my money on that. You probably need all the mounts. Is one of them broken worse than the others? You bet it probably is, but. But uh, uh, I wouldn't be afraid to go there for sure with the mounts. And the, and the other thing on the engine mounts, don't go cheap, Charlie. The the um, <laughs> do you know you, him? <laughs> no, I, I have a couple cheap Charlies that I know. Sometimes I'm cheap Charlie. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but you want you want to make sure that the shop that you choose is using a original equipment mount. You cannot go wrong with original equipment mounts, aftermarket mounts. Just don't waste your money. Like Matt likes to say, go donate it to a uh, charity. You'd be better off. You know, a lot yeah. of these things you put them on, literally they're bad in in six months, you know, or, or less. Were, yeah, or they were never even good anyway. And so. even though they look good, they don't work good. They don't absorb that vibration. So thanks so much for the call, Brian. We're going to go with Eric on a 2004 Acura MDX. Go ahead, Eric. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hi. Hi, Eric. What oh. can we help you with? Yeah, I uh, took this vehicle. I've just owned it since the uh, end of November. Bought it with 77,000 miles on it, really great shape. But I had a recall, which I took it in for on the ignition switch. While I was in there, they told me at the dealer that it would probably be a good idea to get the timing belt changed. Um, and um, I just wanted to understand, because they said they recommend doing it at 60,000 miles because of the severe temperatures here in the valley. And um, I'm right around 79000 on that just in the short time we've had it. So just trying to understand, is that uh, a good idea, um, or do I still have time, or is it, if, if this breaks, am I really in trouble? Well, there's, there's, there's several answers there, and we're going to take them all. If it really breaks, are you in trouble? Yes, you are in trouble. Uh, second thing is 60,000 miles. Don't waste your money. If it was my car, I would not do it that early. I can almost guarantee 99.99% that that Honda or Acura dealer is not ever going to be able to cite to you one example on a 2004 or newer Acura where the timing belt broke prior to 105,000 miles. So in my opinion, you are wasting your money. Do not do it at 60,000. Don't do it at 70,000. If you look in the owner's manual... It probably is 105,000 miles, and then on top of that, there's going to be an asterisk, and it's going to say under severe conditions, and it will have a definition of severe condition, which is consistently above 190 degrees or whatever whatever the temperature range is. And then you have to ask yourself, what does consistently mean? I guess we think the attorneys for having to have all the different definitions. But in my book, we are not consistently above 119 degrees or 110 degrees. We're consistently above that three months out of the year. And it's only three hours a day. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's not, no, more, it's not yeah. morning when you drive to work and evening when you come home. I think there's a little bit of aggressive selling there. And they can lower the price and do a time belt. It's a commodity item. They can blow it in and blow it out, and it's no big deal. If it were me, I would do it at 90000 or 105000 Probably 105 is okay, but it's up to you. You bought it used. You're going to have it for a while. If it puts you in a comfort zone to do it at 90,000, just go ahead and do it then. But you're completely fine until 105 as well. Secondary to that, you don't want to do just the timing belt. You're going to do the timing belt, the water pump, the tensioners, the idler. You're going to do that whole deal, the whole package in there. And then you're not going to mess around with it for another 90 or 105,000 miles more likely.
You know, the timing belt is one of those that, that I really know or I see as the two-step seller. And you ask me, what what the heck is the two-step seller, Dave? Well, the two-step seller is where it's, <laughs> it's, it's a manipulative sales process where they run a coupon for a timing belt for three ninety five. dollars You know, commodity item. And then uh, the reality is you need a lot of other things other than just the timing belt. And as consumers, you guys pick up the phone and call this shop and that shop. Say, how much for a timing belt? How much for a timing belt? How much for a timing belt? Some shops will take the time to explain, well, you're going to need this and you're going to need that and you're going to need the other. Well, that's a lot of sales labor. It's just easier to say three ninety five, And then once we have the car apart, then we'll say, oh, yeah, we should probably take care of that water pump. And we should probably take care of that uh, tensioner and that idler. And, you know, the price is really this much money. Yeah. And uh, it's a two-step seller. And I'm, I'm not crazy about it. You should know all that up front before, you know, well, you still have a choice, but once your car is taken apart, we well, you'd be crazy not to do that stuff. Yeah, that belt is not breaking. Now, on Hyundais and Kias, those cars have got so, so much better. And I'm talking about Hyundai and Kia in the last handful of years. But we used to see those, and, man, we were saying 60,000 miles because those belts were breaking at 62,000, 63,000, and they were recommended at 60. So I think on that one, Mark, take – Take or uh, Eric, take your time, save your money, and find another shop at bumper to bumper radio.com. And uh, if you're looking for a great shop, bumper to bumper radio.com, you're going to find a list of shops that are hand picked by Matt and Dave and Michael and myself. I named myself twice. Look at that. <laughs> and uh, anyway, we'll see you next week.